In today's lecture, we will see the first controlled access protocol, the reservation method. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's lecture, we have two outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will know the various multiple access protocols. Outcome number two, we will understand the controlled access protocol, the reservation method. Let's start the session by just having a quick recapture over the multiple access protocols. We know basically there are three multiple access protocols. Number one, random access protocols. Number two, controlled access protocols. And number three, channelization protocols. In today's session, we are going to deal about the reservation method. Before going into the reservation method, we will see an analogy first. Just contemplate this scenario. Suppose you have a very important meeting at New Delhi. You are actually in Bengaluru and you prefer train for your travel. What if you don't reserve your seat? This seat is not reserved and you are finding this seat which is free. So you want to occupy this free seat. At the same time, another guy who wants to travel in the same train is also finding this free seat. What happens when you and that guy try to occupy the seat at the same time? Obviously, it leads to collision. Perhaps you both need the seat for comfortable travel. If you don't want this discomfort to happen in reality, it's good to reserve your seat before you make your travel. The seat which is reserved for a particular date is valid only on that particular date and the same seat will be provided to many others once that particular reserve date expires. How this is related with our reservation method? Let's see it now. A station need to make a reservation before sending the data. The sending the data is like our travel in the previous case. So before we travel, we do reservation. Likewise, any station that wish to send their data, it has to make a reservation before it sends the data. So this reservation method has so many time intervals. So in each interval, a reservation frame precedes the data frame sent in that interval. This is like we do reservation before we travel. Likewise, a reservation frame precedes the data frames. If there are n stations, how would this reservation is done? If there are n stations in the system, there are exactly n reservation mini slots in the reservation frame. It means there is a reservation frame and this reservation frame is going to have n reservation mini slots. Why n reservation mini slots are needed? Because we have n stations. This point will be clear when we see an example. If we have n mini slots, then each mini slot is going for each station. So each mini slot belongs to a station. Then how the station can send the data? When a station needs to send a data frame, it makes a reservation in its own mini slot. As mentioned earlier, the reservation frame is going to contain n reservation mini slots. Each station will have its own mini slot and the stations that have made reservations can send their data frames after the reservation frame. We have already seen this in point number two. This reservation frame precedes the data frames. So the stations that have made reservations can send their data frames after the reservation frame. Let's see the diagram. It will be more clear for you. In this diagram, this is a reservation frame. And how many mini slots are there? One, two, three, four, five. And each station has its own mini slot. This mini slot is for station one. This is for station two, three, four, and five. Let's start with this. Suppose there are five mini slots and this is the reservation frame. So stations have to do reservation before they send the data. So in this example, station one is making a reservation here. Station two is not making any reservation. Station three and four are making their reservations and station five is not making any reservation. Since station 1 has made its reservation, so station 1 is now sending its data. And if you observe, station 2 is not going to send because it has not reserved the channel. Then station 3 will send the data, followed by station 4. That's it. And this transmission is over. In the next time interval, station 1 alone is doing its reservation, whereas station 2 to 5 are not reserving the channel. So station 1 alone is going to send its data. And coming to the last part of this, no station is doing reservation, so nobody is going to send the data. So from this, it is very clear that there is a reservation frame and each station is going to do a reservation in its mini slot. Before sending the data, reservation frame is sent. This is how the common channel or the shared medium is accessed by more than one station without collision. 
And that's it guys. I hope now you know the various multiple access protocols and we understood the controlled access protocol, the reservation method in today's lecture. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching.